everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode 40. We are almost at the halfway mark. Can you believe it? Yeah, of the year. 2022 is like gone by so fast. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like maybe because we're just it's so just, busy. Yeah, no. we are very busy and, you know, everyone is with doing what they're doing. And hold on, episode 40. And oh, another thing. I just checked our stats and we've made it over 10,000 downloads. Yay. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Congratulations. But, Yes, congratulations <laughs> to our baby podcast. The end is all because of you who are tuning in and thank you so much for your support. Yes, you guys, thank you for listening and for, you know, responding to our questions and commenting. Um, we definitely enjoy it. And I mean, this is really cool to hit 10,000. It's a big deal. Yeah, very big deal. So, you know, we'll see where everything goes, but we're coming up to the one year mark and we have a lot to talk about still. So I hope you guys are enjoying these episodes and are enjoying the diving and deeper with uh, ultrasound in general and kind of being more um, in tune with how sonography is just in general, because it's a lot of information and we know you guys are enjoying all this. So don't forget to fill out the form that Lynn and I have in our, um, in our bios, because you can basically choose what you want us to talk about. And we're going to need obviously more topics you want us to talk about uh, after the whole year anniversary, because we've got a lot of fun stuff planned for you guys. So look forward to that. Yes. It's very exciting to be doing this, to be diving deeper into all the specialties and um we can't wait to hear what you think about it yes yeah so today i mean since it's the end of july you know we switched over to having q and a's um for the last week of the month and it's today's episode is going to be our july q and a and we're going to be answering some questions that you guys have specifically so if you guys um haven't been following us yet on instagram you can go follow us and you can ask any of your questions in there. Um, a lot of the things that people ask us are things that we already mentioned in other episodes. So we'll we'll mention, you know, those episodes you can go back to and listen if you want more detailed. But the the question and answer episodes, like there's only so much we can say in 30 minutes. So our answers are gonna be very short. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this episode today. Okay, so let's get going with the first question. What are some of the sonographers looking for from students during clinicals? Should I read the next couple of questions too, since they're all kind of relating sure. to clinicals? Okay, yeah. so that was the first question. The second question is, what's the best advice or tips you have for new students starting clinicals soon? And the third question is, how likely is it to be offered a job at an old clinical site or how likely is it to be hired post-grad so last was it last month I yeah it was last month where we were really talking about clinicals that was episode 29 we also talked about our personal clinical experience on episode 32 so you can um tune into those two episodes to hear our thoughts on clinicals and how to obtain a job post clinicals. Yeah. So, so we went into really a deep dive with answering these questions, but today we can kind of say a few things real quickly for you guys. Um, I mean, obviously a lot of the things are very, it's very common in any kind of field that you have clinicals in that clinical sites are pretty much an opportunity for you to have like a really long job interview. And obviously you want to impress your clinical sites so uh, throughout a lot of our past episodes, we've talked about how sonographers want students to be, you know, very proactive and they want them to be helpful. And we want to see you guys have obviously um, energy and you want to do things like we would rather have a student who asks questions and asks to help versus someone who just kind of stands there and doesn't know what to do, which um, 
can be hard in the beginning. And Lynn did share a story in one of the episodes before where she kind of had to take the initiative to talk and ask questions and be like, hey, is there anything I can do? So I think that's a very important thing that you guys need to do as a student in clinical to show that you actually care, that you want to be there um, and that you want to put your best foot forward. They want to see that you want to actually be there. Um, so those are some of my best advice and tips really quickly um, that we've covered before. But, you know, since Lynn is a student, what do you think as far as like answering these questions? So for these questions, um, like I said in the other episodes, it's just um, make use of your time. Do it wisely. Help out your preceptor or wherever you're at. Like if you're with one person or with multiple um, sonographers, just offer to help because, you know, they're taking the time to teach you and you're there to learn. Um, you know, it's just, it's not a bad way, a bad thing to offer to lighten up their a little bit. You know, like even if for me, what I did was I fill up linens in the morning to make sure all the rooms are fully stocked. It's just make their lives a little bit easier during the day. And, you know, it's just that, effort that you put in for them so that they can see that oh this person is like they really want to be helpful they want to learn and it makes them want to teach you when you have yeah. questions yeah so she pretty much hit the nail on the head obviously she's a student she's about to graduate and we are hoping you know obviously for the last question how likely is it to be offered a job or be hired post-grad, like we're hoping that she gets hired right away. And that is very likely. Um, so to answer the question, it's very possible for you to get hired, you know, right away, straight from your clinical. And it is very, very common. It's not, it's not far from the ordinary or um, kind of like, eh, will that really happen to me? Because all this job is, is really a whole networking type of deal. Like, you can get a job right away if you know people and a lot of places are hiring, but most of the time they want to hire their students. It's not like they don't want to. It's if they can't and, and they like you, it's because they probably don't have an opening at that time. So, mm -hmm. you know, just just know that it is an opportunity. It's very likely to be offered a job at an old clinical site or hired post-grad, very, very likely. And a lot of the stories from everyone we talked to, like they were hired right away from their clinical site or from someone that they knew from the clinical site. Like they were like, hey, this this student was really good. You should hire them kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. And Julie, last our guest for last week, she was hired from her old clinical site. So it's totally doable. Clinicals are basically considered your working interviews. You're there for them to see what your potential is and the best thing out of it is that when you leave that site they ask for your resume mm -hmm. or you know to tell you to keep in touch yeah and you can always like message them back i mean take the opportunity to ask for their numbers you know and like keep in touch like don't burn bridges you know and i know there's a lot of places where you can feel it out and if you actually don't like working there that's fine too there's so many different places that you can go and be part of and in the Facebook groups I see all the time people hiring and people looking all the time every day so keep your eyes open do your best in clinicals and just know that there's such a huge possibility for you to get hired right away after graduating next question is it hard to learn ultrasound when you really don't have a physics brain yeah quote unquote physics brain <laughs> Well, what it what from you? I don't have a physics brain. I hate physics with every <laughs> piece of my being, but I think it's doable. Um, I just don't think it's, I think it's more of the mindset. Just don't think that, oh, it's physics. I can't do it and be demotivated before you even start the class. You know, just think that it's physics. It's going to be tough. So I'm just going to take it at a slow pace. And, you know, if I need help, seek out help as soon as I can that's why I did mm -hmm. you know I take it at a very very slow pace and I use resources like YouTube um just to understand before I get 
you know, overwhelmed and behind. Yeah, good It's advice. doable. It is doable. I, I think about how majority of the comments people say on my YouTube channel is, I don't know if I'll be able to get through physics or math. And honestly, you just have to get through the classes, like just get through the classes. Yes, you have to understand physics, but it's a little bit more than that, like an ultrasound physics. It's being able to understand how to make your images look better and how to have quality diagnostic images for the doctor. Yes, you have to know physics, but it's not like I'm doing physics equations at work. So you know, just kind of push through physics as much as you can, because I don't have a physics brain either. And ultrasound is very, you know, it's it's not solely based on physics. It's how you're looking at the image, how you're finding the organ on a patient's body. Like somebody can know everything about physics, but not be a good scanner. And that kind of goes back to, oh, somebody can have straight A's in school, but also not be able to have the good qualities of someone who can do quality patient care or bedside manners. So it's all kind of like a full circle kind of deal. If if you can get through physics, that's just kind of like the end of it. You have to just pass that test, which is what I what went through with me. Like I had to take physics three, I had to take the exam three times. So obviously I don't have a physics brain, but I can bust out a pretty good scan for a doctor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so Yeah, your images are beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I mean, it could be hard, but you know what I'm saying? Every Everything about the program it's is doable. hard. <laughs> yeah, it's doable. It's doable. Yeah. To, Next you question. just gotta push through. <laughs> yeah. Next question. Do you work with a lot of blood or bodily fluids? Well, let's it start with you. Depends. Yeah. Depends on the facility, right? If you're inpatient hospital setting, obviously mm-hmm. there's you're more prone to have those instances. <laughs> <laughs> well, like for you as an echovascular student, do you see that often? When I was in the hospital, yes. Mm-hmm. When I was in the hospital, be, um, inpatient setting, you know, patients are in tubes and recently mm-hmm. had surgery and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Very, very common. You see it every day. Um, outpatient, nope. Haven't seen a drop of blood since. Only my blood, you know, paper cuts. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> paper it. cuts. Man, I get so mad when I get paper cuts. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, I got them yesterday. Uh, and then you have to like hand sanitize and it's like burning. <laughs> yeah, I had to wash my hands and they didn't have band-aids or I couldn't yeah. find band-aids. So I had to like gauze and you know, yeah. medical tape it. <laughs> Be careful with those papers. But yeah, no, yeah. I, I mean, I think echovascular, if you don't want bodily fluids or blood, I think echo echoes are probably echo vascular has you. less. Yeah, less because outpatient wise, echo, I think you won't see that at all. Yes. You know, because you're usually in a doctor's office, right? Yes. outpatient if you're inpatient patient like um like she said patients in the hospital you know they've got bandages all over they just had surgeries someone's like on ventilators you know and you can see yeah. a lot of blood and yeah so you can you can avoid that by not working in a hospital setting really um but general ultrasound yes we see blood and bodily fluids hundred percent. And especially if you're in a hospital setting, especially if you work in an ER, hundred percent. Also, if you do hospital setting or outpatient, you have the opportunity to also do procedures. And our main two procedures are called paracentesis and thoracentesis, where we actually remove those body fluids from the belly or the chest. So if you want to avoid those, you know, you kind of can't get out of that if you're in a hospital setting, um, unless there's another department that does those. Because you know, some places on the East Coast, I know they have different departments for um, ultrasound, but like majority of general departments, they all do the procedures um, or biopsies, and you are assisting the radiologist, so you will see blood and bodily fluids. Oh, and definitely um, if you do pregnancies, pregnancies <laughs> yes. and pelvics, lots of people have vaginal bleeding. 
So you can't get out of that one either. <laughs> Next question. What are some school supplies every sonography student needs? Looks like someone's preparing for the program. Yeah, yeah it's summertime. Hmm. Well, I mean, I honestly, in my classes, the way my program was, we just took notes like in lecture. So depending on if you like taking paper notes or, you know, typing up your notes. Uh, back then, like we didn't have the iPads where you could write on them, but now that's a mm -hmm. thing. So I would say that it depends on how you take notes, how you study. Nowadays, mm -hmm. like we have so much options to take notes. If you're old school, you know, paper, pen, highlighter, I've seen it. I've seen my classmates who have notebooks of the whole lecture and she draws and colors them. Very beautiful, by the way. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that just have an iPad and the Apple, Apple pencil. And they just took notes on that. That was literally in her bag. That's it. And she always come in with her bag, an iPad, uh, an Apple pencil and a coffee. That's how she's yeah. taking notes. You know, it just depends on how you study. So yeah. we don't have a, a, you know, a list specifics to do. Yeah. But I would say to prepare for class, definitely your textbook mm -hmm. that's required for class. Yeah. Um, I also know that there are some textbooks that is available online in PDF for free. Hmm. So uh, use that resource, Google, search PDF online, see if you can obtain those books for free before buying them. Yeah. To save money. And also see if like, if it's a common book that people get, if you can get it online from like reused, like reuse because I mean, there's a bunch of books out there. I'm sure people are selling on Facebook too. Yeah. It's honestly dependent upon your program. I don't think there's really anything you really truly need for a sonography school, except for whatever your school tells you, how you take notes. Even some places, like they'll print out your notes and you can just write on there. I remember getting yeah. PowerPoint printouts back in the day. I don't even know what it's like now. <laughs> No, they don't, they don't do, do that? that anymore. Yeah, they probably don't do that. <laughs> but, Safe trees, you know? Yeah. So yeah. if I could right now, I would probably use my iPad because I my iPad actually you can like write on it, but then I have the whole keyboard connected to it so I can type on there if I wanted to. And That's I, what I do during lecture. Okay. But I feel like I type yeah. faster than writing. So like yes. I'd probably type instead of write. <laughs> my hand cramps when I write now. Oh no, that's weird. Like out of school, like you, I, I never really write anything unless it's like on the schedule mm -hmm. at work. Yeah. Otherwise I don't really write anything. You so just my handwriting's bad. <laughs> what a world we live in. Right. <laughs> yeah. So definitely um, you don't really need much. Just need your brain really for school. Yes. Okay. Can sonographers wear scrub caps? I highly recommend. I mean, also depends on where you work. Like if they require it, then yeah. yes. Um, if there's an option, I would recommend it because I learned it the hard way. I feel like I said this on one of the episodes. I think you might have. I, I, I was scanning a, a patient and he was uh -huh. coughing the entire time. And uh. he was really close to me. And, and I felt so gross afterwards. And it was like, and my hair was like, I, I didn't have my hair in a ponytail. I just had my hair like this. Mm -hmm. So I came home and I showered. And after that, I got a scrub cap okay. so I can wear it. This was an inpatient in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And after I left that site, my preceptor gave me two, two more scrub caps. Uh, <laughs> so I, I wear them. Um, I yeah. don't wear them in outpatient though. I was going to say, I saw, I remember just when depends. you posted your pictures of you and your scrub caps. Like yeah, you. we ordered together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't start wearing scrub caps until 2020 and COVID and everything. And everyone started wearing scrub caps. Um, I was wearing it for a minute. I would especially wear it if I was going into COVID rooms, but I don't wear them anymore. But, you know, you can wear them if you want to. I feel like it's a preference now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before it was actually like you should you know, mm -hmm. but we also didn't know anything about everything. <laughs> like it depends on where you work mostly because I know my sister, she wears her scrub caps. She's a dental hygienist. She, she wears it because yeah. she's required to. Mm -hmm. 
So, so up to you, but yes, yes, they can. You know, I don't see many people wearing scrub caps in outpatient setting at all, really. I think mostly hospitals. Is it harder to find a job if you are specialized, like in echo? I mean, I, I, I don't. I think, think so. it is harder if you only have one specialty, mm. then you're very limited to that specialty. But if you have mm. two, you don't have to have every specialty. You just have two, then you can alternate. Um, yeah. I just feel like there's so many places to work. For example, like if you are an echo sonographer and you only do echo, you can work in any doctor's office, any echo department, anywhere. It's just limited because you're only doing echo. So, you know, Lynn saying, if you have two, like echo and vascular, that opens your options more so for where you can work and how you can work and which department you can work in. Yes. So for her, um, since she does echo vascular, that makes it less harder. So what she's saying is definitely correct. And I'm thinking about people who like want to only specialize in OB, GYN or MFM. They are limited to so little amount of places or basically opening up their own business if they wanted that a lot of the small businesses are OBGYN, mm -hmm. MFM related. But I think that that's what makes it harder is because you're limited to, to whatever your specialty is versus if you did everything. And there's a lot of like full body sonographers, like people who do general vascular and echo mm -hmm. where they can work anywhere, 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 yeah. anywhere you want. So it's, it's easier to find a job that way. But even if someone was just a general sonographer or a vascular sonographer and did everything, it can still be hard to find a job depending on where you're looking, you know? So even if you're specialized, it doesn't, it doesn't make it harder, but you're more limited. I agree. Limited is the word. You're, it's not hard. It's just limited depending on your location, uh, where you are, what facilities around you, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause like when you so say, I, is it harder? If, if it, it's like, the only thing that makes it harder is where you live or yes. the opportunity around you because ultrasound in general for any mod any modality or any specialty everyone's hiring i mean just look at just look at the facebook groups like everyone's hiring <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah it's a growing field very much so so if it's hard it's, only it's because of where you yeah it's because where you're living or looking nice, nice question I like these questions <laughs> i love i love doing q and a's yeah it's like our our chillax episode mm -hmm. um all right next question could you recommend comfortable shoes so what do you wear i am currently on the lookout for comfortable shoes oh. to work <laughs> um but i love for now i love all birds Oh, all birds. Yes. You know, it's funny. I seen an Instagram ad for those. That's but creepy. Did algorithm. we mention something about all birds in that in that pop think, up? I think so. <laughs> I guess but, so creeped out by the algorithms. I know. I've some you know, sometimes I get like shoe recommendations. And I think it's like after people ask me about shoes and I'm like, whatever, <laughs> whatever's comfortable for you, obviously. Everyone's feet mm -hmm. are different. They're yeah, different. I have wide feet. Um I want to try, was that the, the Hoka? Oh, yeah. Which, oh, I want to try that because I've heard it's good. Everyone um, is actually suggesting Hoka. Yes. Or like the Discord. Um, on, on cloud. Is it cloud? Wait, cloud? Is that, is that what it's called? Well, there's one called Clove. It's a nursing. No, no, not, not Clove. Okay. Those you said hurt initially, they, right? They initially hurt, but actually they feel better now. I think I got the wrong size. <laughs> but it, um, it, it, it it's better now. So yeah, honestly, looking it up because I I had uh, tendonitis. Was it tendonitis in mm -hmm. my feet? And then I did a like a question on Instagram, like which shoes is comfortable on cloud. Oh, so on so cloud. I got Hoka and on cloud are the to most. Try. That's yes. what everyone says. Okay, Hoka and on cloud. If you ask people in my Discord, they are gonna say Hoka's, and then I always say I have actually worn like every freaking type of shoe at work like i've worn nikes adidas 
pumas. Um, you have so much shoes. Yeah, cloves. It's actually pronounced with love. Um, okay. Oh. So, yeah, because the C with the dash above it mm -hmm. is with. So it's called with love. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, it's made in love. Isn't that cute? Um, but they they hurt me at first initially, like when I first got them and tried them out. But actually, like they're more comfortable now and I really like them. And the newer ones don't squeak as much as the older ones do. Like, I think they don't squeak at all. The first ones were like really squeaky. <laughs> oh. But so you have two. Yeah, I have two of them. And I honestly think I need a new pair of shoes. So maybe I should try the Hoka's because everyone's already about it. Yeah. You should get it and let me know so I can get one. I stopped by the store um, in the city and it was so busy. I didn't even bother to try on. So I'll, I'll try it. Oh, yeah. Back. I'm going to find out where there is one. But you guys should comment below what shoes you wear and let us know what's comfortable for you. Yes. One of my oh. feet are smaller than the other one. <laughs> it's so funny. You're so, your body is so funny. <laughs> I know. I, um, I actually wear, at my clinicals, I wear the, uh, the clogs, the dang, dang, coats, dang coats. You know, Clog those like old, old lady clogs. <laughs> are they comfortable? Lady. They are. They are super comfortable. I have nurses them since, wear them. I've, yeah. I've had them since my waitressing days, which is hmm. almost 10 years ago. And they are super comfortable because they fit at at where my the arc of my feet is. Mm -hmm. And since my feet are wide, it's very roomy up front. Hmm. The thing I don't like about them is that they're very bulky. Um, and they and they and, like but they, they gave me like two inches higher, but yeah. So far they're comfy. They're comfy for, you know, just walking around and mm -hmm. sitting down. I think my coworker wears those. I always hear her like footsteps when she walks in the door in the morning. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. They're coming. not trendy, but they are a reliable one. Okay, next one. Do you ever scan yourself? Yes. I did you? yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I feel we scan ourselves all the time. Yeah. I mean, you've got a machine there. And you know what you're looking for. So yep. why not? Mm-hmm. So that's where I found like an, I found like a nodule on my thyroid, um, my ovaries. I, I look at them all the time because I've got stuff going on. I try to find my endometrium, but my uterus is retroverted. So it goes backwards. And that's really cool. Yeah. We, we scan ourselves all the time. Just when we're curious, even like my coworker, like she'll get like pain in her left pelvic region. And it's like, we look and then she has like a cyst and we're like, oh. That's why you have pain. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I scan myself just to practice. Yeah. You know, I practice anatomy, practice scanning on myself. It's a little bit weird, but you know, if you know what you're looking at, it's yeah. fun. Yeah, you might I try to scan my tendonitis, but I don't know MSK, so I'd have no clue what I was looking at. <laughs> yeah. Besides okay. bone. And a lot of times we're like looking. But then I, I also feel like maybe that makes it like oh, we can see what's going on, you know? And you're like worried and you're like, okay, never mind, it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely interesting to have a, a machine and be able to scan yourself. Mm -hmm. and, um, but if you're, if you obviously know what you're looking at, so if you're curious, just, just pick up the probe and look. And obviously mm -hmm. don't do it while you're like busy or like in the middle of work or whatever. Do it in the beginning when you have or downtime. The end, when you have downtime, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much uh, something you guys will have the opportunity to do and have fun while you're scanning in clinicals. But yes, yeah, I think I think that'll wrap up the questions for today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we appreciate all the questions that you guys sent us. Yes, yes, we will continue doing this next month. So if you mm -hmm. are not following us on Instagram, please do so that when we send out these um, question inquiries, you can submit your questions and we'll have it on the last episode of August. So last Friday of August. Yes. And it keeps our conversations interesting. We love hearing what you guys have to ask us and we will definitely go into more questions next month. So thank you guys so much. Don't forget to uh, rate us on Spotify 
or Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. Or both in podcasts. Yeah. And don't forget to subscribe to Just Tell Channel. If you're watching this, like this video, comment below. Watch your other videos, like, comment as well. <laughs> we appreciate your support. And until next week. Yes, thank you, Which guys. is August. <laughs> thank you. Bye.